Used to be, you had to have a big major publisher in New York City publish your book if you wanted to go on TV. You had to be with Random House or Macmillan or Penguin USA and they would give you a publicist and that person would get you booked on Montel Williams or maybe even Oprah. But it's not that way anymore. Now, you can get booked on TV with anything. I mean, any book published, even if it's just an e-book. Like one of the books that I've been booked on a lot of shows is a little children's book that I wrote and illustrated for my daughter when she was a year old. It's called Daddy Loves You. Her mom and I split up when, when she was just a baby. And I wanted her to know, even if I wasn't there at night, that maybe somebody would read that book to her with bedtime stories and she would know, Daddy Loves You. And I've been on lots of shows with that. And I, I promise you, there is no lower animal in the publishing industry than a self-published, self-illustrated children's book. That's a pure vanity project if ever there was one. And I've been on shows even in Chicago, the number three market in America, with that book. So don't think that you can't get on TV today. You can. And I have studied this and perfected this as an art form, really. And I've helped more than a thousand authors, speakers, coaches, entrepreneurs, experts of every kind to use my mathematical formula for getting on TV anytime you want for free to book themselves on more than 3,849 television appearances that I'm aware of so far with ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox. We've been on all the biggest shows on Good Morning America, The Today Show, Dr. Oz. One of my clients is on Dr. Oz every single month. Anybody like Bone Broth in this room? Any Bone Broth fans here? Yeah, well, she has two New York Times bestselling books on Bone Broth, Dr. Kelly and Petrucci. And she's on Dr. Oz every month using what she learned at My Celebrity Launchpad. That's one element of what I call celebrity entrepreneurship. There are five. The second element of being a celebrity entrepreneur, being that thumbs up in the eyes of your customers and prospects, a very famous person in, in the eyes of the people you're trying to enroll into what you do. That's all we're trying to do. You're not trying to be Kim Kardashian. You're not trying to be Coca-Cola. You just want to be thumbs up or country club. The second way to do it is with what I call VIP speaking. And VIP doesn't mean what you think it means. It means very important places. You need to speak in places that are very important. A lot of my clients, I arrange for them to speak at the Harvard Club in Boston or at NASDAQ or in different places that are important places to people. We've even spoken at West Point for the leaders of our nation's future. What an honor that was to be there at West Point with none other than Buzz Aldrin, astronaut from Apollo 11, the second man to walk on the moon. He's a graduate of West Point, and he was there speaking with us. That's the second part of VIP speaking, very important places and very important people. You want to speak with important people. We've spoken with Caitlyn Jenner and Suzanne Somers and, and Buzz Aldrin, and even one of my favorites was the most interesting man in the world from the Dos Equis beer commercials. You know who, exactly who I'm talking about. He's a very important person. And I've had the privilege of sharing this message with him at multiple events sponsored by the Entrepreneurship Club of Harvard Business School. That's very important places, very important people. And the third part about VIP is very important parables. You want to tell stories that have a meaning for you and that teach the audience a lesson. There was a great teacher who spoke in parables. Probably the most famous guy on the whole planet. He's been dead about 2018 years. He spoke in parables. See, see the power of parables? That's VIP speaking. That's the second element of being a celebrity entrepreneur in the eyes of your customers and prospects. The third one is really fun. Awards. Awards. Now, anybody here ever heard of a guy named Arnold Kobelson? Nobody. He's the greatest celebrity entrepreneur of all time. And I, I realize that this is an important element of celebrity entrepreneurship, is that people don't have to know who you are. See, you don't have to be Kim Kardashian to be a great celebrity entrepreneur. You could be completely anonymous. I was talking on the phone when I was coming to Celebrity Launchpad here in Atlanta a couple of years ago. My Uber driver, after I hung up my, on my phone call, my Uber driver goes, um, excuse me, sir. Um, can I ask you a question? Sure, what's up? 
you know, you sound like the way you talk, you sound like maybe you're like somebody, are, are you famous? I said, you know, man, I'm like the most famous guy that nobody's ever heard of. <laughs> Except for Arnold Copelson. He's really the most famous guy that nobody ever heard of. Has anybody ever seen the movie Platoon? Yeah. Won the best picture in 1986, starring Charlie Sheen and Willem Dafoe and Tom Berenger. Great, great army movie. Arnold Copelson produced that movie. He won the Academy Award for Best Picture from producing that movie. Then he went on to get his Academy Award. They broadcast him on television. See, that's the TV part. He gave a speech accepting that award at the Academy Awards. That's the VIP speaking part, right? He's on TV giving that speech. That's beautiful. And you're saying, well, Clint, I can't get on national television broadcast all around the world winning an Academy Award. You don't have to. You can go on local TV news and talk shows. My students and I, we go on in little cities around the country. I told you about Biloxi, Mississippi. Believe me, Biloxi, Mississippi is almost as good as ABC Nightline. I promise you. In the eyes of your customers and prospects. And certainly for you when you're starting out, you need to go to these little shows. But then it's the awards. Now, did you know, you, you've heard about these awards called the Star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You know how, who heard about they wanted to, they, they passed an ordinance in West Hollywood. They wanted to take away Donald Trump's star from the Hollywood Walk of Fame, but they can't do that. You know why? Because somebody paid $40,000 for Donald Trump to have that star. That's what it costs to get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, $40,000. Look it up, Google it, you'll see. Today, awards very rarely come with a cash prize. A lot of times, it costs you money to get that award. For example, the Inc. 500, 5,000, you guys have heard of that award. That's a very interesting award. It's $175 to apply for the Inc. 5,000 award. You gotta figure more than 5,000 companies apply. Do the math, it adds up to quite a lot. There's the Inc. 5,000 in North America, there's the Inc. 5,000 in Europe. If you haven't won an award, shame on you. There's plenty of awards to win and you need to figure out a way so that you can deliberately, methodically, systematically start applying and getting these awards and stacking them up. A few years ago, I had the great privilege of winning an award from one of my mentors. I've studied with a lot of people. That's another thing they asked me on the Today Show. Willie Geist, he goes, you know, Clint, we all have these great dreams. We all want to climb to the top of the highest mountain, but how do you keep from getting lost along the way. And I said, hey, you need to invest as much money as you possibly can in a mentor. I have invested so much money in my mentors like Dan Kennedy. I've, I've invested a lot of money and a lot of time studying him, traveling all around the country to study what he's saying in live speeches. Because you can't, you, you know, video is good. But when you're in a room with a person, you can really get the energy of what they're, on, what they're talking about. You can understand what they're talking about more. That's why I travel all around to study with this guy. And a few years ago, I was awarded his Information Marketer of the Year. And I'll tell you what, has anybody here ever heard of the GKIC Info Marketer of the Year Award? No, but I'll tell you what, my customers and prospects have. That really opened things up for me. All of a sudden, I became somebody, and that's what you're trying to do with these methodologies is to become somebody special in the eyes of your customers and prospects. Not in the whole world's eyes, you're not gonna be Kim, you just wanna be thumbs up. Awesome, right? Okay, awards, you gotta figure out how to get awards. Next is becoming a best-selling author. There's a lot, excuse me, there's a lot of reasons why you wanna write a book, a lot of reasons. You gotta write a book for the discipline of writing a book, because real experts write books on their topics. They do. I know guys, this, there's this one guy, Jorge Cruz, he writes about belly fat. He has a whole bunch of belly fat cure books. Every one is a bestseller, year after year. Every year he comes out with another book about belly fat. How much really is there to say about belly fat? It's like, dude, you're fat. What else is there to say? Stop eating. <laughs> but, but this guy comes out with new books every year because why? It's a great way for you to be able to market to your customers and prospects. Hey, I got a new book coming out and I'm really excited to share it with you. It's called Belly Fat Cure Part Duh. Duh. <laughs> and it's, it's the second coming of Jesus and you gotta get it, amen, hallelujah. And 
it's only 1995 and it comes with all these extra bonuses and it's special today and it also has a ticket to my live event. You can pile on all these things to create a very interesting offer for customers and prospects so that you have something that may pique their interest and get them to pull out the credit card and say, yeah, I'll take that. I'd like to become not just a looker or a lurker, but a buyer. That's what you want, you want buyers. That Now, you write that book, and then if you're gonna write a book, why not make it a bestseller? It used to be there was a very limited opportunity for bestsellers. You could be a New York Times bestseller, Wall Street Journal bestseller, USA Today bestseller. But now there's a very special thing, it's called Amazon.com. And I'm here to tell you, it ain't that hard to become an Amazon.com bestseller. Just cut a check, spend a few ducats, and before you know it, your little ebook or pamphlet is a bestseller in at least one category on Amazon, maybe even a number one international bestseller because it became a bestseller here and in Canada or in Australia or wherever books are sold by that great Amazon in the sky. And I'll tell you what, now you've amassed quite an interesting little proposition for your customers and prospects. Now you're a number one best-selling author, you're an award-winning speaker, you are on TV, you are speaking in very important places with very important people, celebrities, you've got photos, you've got videos, and you're somebody. Now, you are never going to be Kim, but you don't have to be Kim. You just got to be somebody, and you'll be amazed. Once you become somebody special in the eyes of your customers and prospects, then you'll find something very fascinating happens. You really start to become somebody in your own eyes. Now I asked Mike Tyson, I said, Mike, I said, champ, what's the most important thing you ever learned? He said, stay humble. And I know you're thinking, well, you know, now you got these awards, you're on TV, you're thinking you're somebody. You're going to, is this really about ego? This is not about ego. This is about making a difference. This is about having impact, having influence, making more income, making your message have impact in the world. And the number one thing you need to be able to have that impact and influence is confidence that what you have to do is worth it. Now, lucky for me, We'll go back to the desk. The book is sitting on the shelf, collecting dust. Lucky for me, that was around December of 2009. Because what happened? On December 14, 2009, I went to a raw vegan retreat called Optimum Health Institute in San Diego, California. And one of the rules there, besides the fact that you have to drink wheatgrass juice three times a day, is that you're not allowed to take drugs or alcohol while you're there. So I play by the rules when I need to, when I want to, and I stopped drinking and smoking marijuana. And lucky for me, by the end of 2009, I had said, you know, even though I'm not at Optimum Health Institute anymore, I'm still going to stay with this quitting smoking thing. I don't want to smoke pot anymore. I used to have a problem with insecurity, doubt, paranoia. Those were my reactions to smoking marijuana. And once I was free of that, then I was able to start investing in going on TV and making my dreams become my reality because I had the confidence. I didn't have the doubt and the insecurity. You see, I, I'm not telling you to become a celebrity entrepreneur so that you can have a big swell head and think you're all that and a bag of chips and a bottle of thumbs up. I'm not telling you that. I'm just saying that you need to have confidence in what you're doing if you want to have an impact. You need to believe in your book. You need to believe that your book is good enough. You need to believe that your training is good enough, that your training is actually good. And, I, and I'm telling you, if you take the time to write a book, you will probably write a pretty decent book. Maybe not War and Peace. Maybe it's not going to be... I, I was very, very lucky. One of my other teachers in life was a man named Frank McCourt. He wrote a book called Angela's Ashes. Anybody read Angela's Ashes? A few people? Well, when I was in high school in New York City, I went to Stuyvesant High School where Frank McCourt taught. 
I studied creative writing with Frank McCord for two years, and he inspired all of us to want to be great writers because he was such an interesting storyteller and such a, a, a different kind of teacher. He would just tell us stories about his life, and then who knew he was going to go on and write his book, Angela's Ashes, and win the Pulitzer Prize and have it turned into an A studio feature film. I, I remember my dad, I went to visit my dad when he was in his late 70s, and I said, um, hey dad, did, did you see my teacher wrote a book and he won the Pulitzer Prize? He goes, you mean that Irish guy? That was Frank McCord. I mean, even my dad knew who he was. That's how much impact he had in his life. And, and that has instilled in me this great appreciation for storytelling and for writing and for writing books, and I'm, I don't know that I'll ever write a book as great as Angela's Ashes, but I'll tell you what, I just recently wrote a book called Celebrity Entrepreneurship, where I just tell all the stories I know about how to do what I just talked about here today. I gave you a brief overview of Celebrity Entrepreneurship. If you're interested in learning more about it, this book is the best thing I've ever done. I really, really did a great job of publishing it with all kinds of proprietary, unique photos that you can't get anywhere else. They're my photos that I took with famous people. <laughs> and it's, it's a really, really cool book. I don't know that it's Angela's Ashes, but I did my best, and I believe it's really, really good. And I believe that each of you is capable of having a message that's really, really good if you care enough to take the time to write a book make it a bestseller, start going on TV, start speaking about it in important places, getting awards for it, whether you have to pay for them, $175 or $40,000, get that award, and then get photos of yourself with famous people at these famous places, and do these things to distinguish yourself, and you too can have the impact you want to have, the influence you want to make, and the income that you truly deserve to get for being a special person. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to take some of your time. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that each of you will go out there and make your unique difference in this world, because we need people who believe in what they're doing, who can make a difference, and who can be celebrities in the eyes of their customers and prospects.